the push for everyone to go plant-based is everywhere. If you've walked down the frozen food aisle at your local grocery store lately, you've seen more plant-based quote-unquote alternatives than ever before, often presented in ways that inattentive consumers won't even realize are plant-based. The messaging from activists and public officials is everywhere, and it's ramping up. The UN is about to have a huge conference on the ecosystem, and one outcome is going to be greater pushes by governments to promote a diet that is not ancestrally appropriate for human beings. Our ancestors weren't vegan, no matter what they tell you. The official pressure is only going to get worse from here, and there is little to no organized resistance to what they're doing. Clearly, the UN is ramping up the anti-meat work engaged in by the people who think they're the betters of everyone, and as a consequence of that, have a right to dictate how you and I eat. For those who think there's no formal push to ban meat, that no one is pushing anyone, think again. The UNCOP27 conference will now feature advocacy groups for plant-based lifestyles for the first time in that organization's history, with a group called ProVeg set to appear at a new fo food-focused and food systems pavilion at the big conference. Now, the conference is itself a conference on the environment and the issues our rulers are so concerned about related to the, we'll just say, thermometer. You kind of have to be careful how you talk about these things here because our totally free and totally fair and uncensorious hosts have decided to take a side in a scientific debate, which isn't terribly scientific of our hosts to do. It's in fact rather dogmatic of them. So what is this push this year? It's a pretty predictable one, really. They're repeating anti-meat propaganda, claiming that 80% of agricultural land is used for meat while only producing 18% of the calories which is only technically true if you don't include the fact that the vast majority of cattle grazing land isn't fit for growing much of anything on. Cattle can graze on rocky land or on land that has been nearly sterilized by monoculture crop production, but you can't grow plants for human consumption on those lands, not in any real amounts. You can grow grass and scrub and that's about it. The activists know this and they don't care because they think there are too many of us around and think they will get to dictate who gets to stay and who, well, we'll just say who doesn't. The article in question comes from plantbasednews.org, a vegan quote-unquote news outlet. I love these websites. They're really hilarious to read and sometimes blackpilling. Quote, amongst various displays at COP27 will be a 130 square meter food action pavilion. It'll be spearheaded by food awareness NGO ProVeg International and supported by 17 other global partners. ProVeg hopes that its pavilion will shine a light on the role of food production particularly animal agriculture, in the uh, thermometer crisis. Last year's event drew criticism and accusations of greenwashing from activist campaigners. Greenwashing is a huge problem on their end of things, by the way. This was after it was revealed that meat was served to attendees and delegates flew in on private jets. How dare they? A lack of food system discussions also disappointed many observers of the Glasgow conference, end quote. It's because the food system's not the problem. But they then go on to remind you about all those lies I told you about before, about animal agriculture, and they claim that animal agriculture is responsible for 80% of the emissions from the agriculture sector. To get to that number, you got to do some pretty creative accounting, which I covered in previous videos on this subject in the past. But that's predictable. Creative accounting is pretty predictable from people who aren't honest. We're not dealing with good faith actors here, folks. Not once you get to that level of activity where you're invited to places like the UN and their big conferences. Maybe the people on the ground doing the work are true believers, but once you get to this level, you're an activist for power. Here's their real program. Here's what they're going for. It's out in the open for everyone to see. Quote, ProVeg and its partners want to encourage UN member states to transition towards a plant-based food system. Its campaign banner will show, be showcased throughout the COP27 event. Approval by the UN to set up the pavilion at COP27 really marks a tectonic shift in the UN's approach to food systems, Rafael Podselver, head of UN advocacy at ProVeg, said in a statement. We hope the pavilion will engage policymakers around the world to address the challenges posed by agriculture and encourage countries to embrace the solutions. Inaction on food systems at this stage is no longer an option. We need to transition more to plant-based diets to bring down pollution, Pod Silver noted. Scientific evidence shows that this transition can help put the brake on thermometer problems, <laughs> as well as ensure food security for future generations. Wow, what blatant lies. 
COP27 is being held in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt in November. Almost 200 countries will be in attendance. To date, progress has been slow in Egypt, with more focus placed on increased natural gas production than decarbonization, end quote. It's also been slow there because it's a traditional culture and they tend to eat a lot of lamb in that part of the world. Look, I've got a PhD in public policy. I studied sustainable development and I began the program generally believing the claims, but finished pretty angry at the obvious ploy going on here and not believing anything they say. What they are pushing for is the ability to force decisions on every human being about the most basic things in life, including what and how you eat. They're not even hiding it either. This is out in the open for everyone to see, and it's getting, you know, official sanction from the highest levels of government. And with 200 governments in attendance, you will see the policy focus shift in their favor a little bit. Things are typically done in baby steps, fashions, for policies that they know will be deeply unpopular. You're not going to see a titanic, a titanic shift in policy through some space race, let's get to the moon level government program focus that is highly public. Not with something this unpopular. Just look at how the student loan forgiveness in the U.S. was received by the public for a contemporary example of why that's just not going to happen. These things are done piecemeal because they are so very deeply unpopular. Meat consumption by the public, red meat especially, is at an all-time high. To really drive this point home, though, they're now increasing the propaganda against animal agriculture. Plant-based news also promoted this story that same day. Headline. Here's where to watch Eating Our Way to Extinction, for free online. The feature-length film narrated by Kate Winslet unpacks the impact of our food system. <laughs> now, thankfully for us, these people haven't gotten the memo yet that most people out there, regardless of their political beliefs and anything else, are sick and tired of celebrities lecturing the rest of us about anything. Since we all know that the only thing celebrities are experts in is playing pretend for a living. Imagine making your living playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's kind of what they do for a living, basically. And most of us are tired of being lectured by them, even if we agree in principle on whatever they might be talking about at a given time, since they tend to lecture people about a lot of different things. Not that I do on this topic, though. From that article, quote, The documentary, which runs for one hour and 22 minutes, brings to light the destruction caused by animal agriculture in various corners of the world. For example, the Amazon rainforest, the Mongolian desert, the Taiwanese mountains, and the U.S. Dust Bowl. It's this negative impact that is not given enough airtime, according to Otto and the film's producer, Mark Galvin. Something that we found incredibly frustrating is this subject and this story is left out of the debate so many times. The pair told Plant-Based News, PBN, last year. They added that even the 26th UN conference, its last year's COP conference, which took place shortly after the film's launch, neglected to properly address animal farming's impact on the planet. It's still kind of taking the sideline, they said. The sad thing, the frustrating thing, is it's not actually representing the science, end quote. So this film came out at a festival a year ago during the last COP conference, and now it's being released in time for this year's conference. That's not a coincidence. It's designed to put pressure on the lawmakers who attend this year's conference to pay attention and fall in line. But hopefully this will gain a little traction, although, as I'll show you in a second, it's already been watched a lot in the last month. Just remember, he who controls the food controls you. That's a simple fact of life. What they want is greater regulatory control of the food supply by linking agriculture to binding treaties that all governments sign. They've already categorically rejected the claims that are actually rooted in science that regenerative agriculture will help them achieve their stated and claimed goals that seem innocent on themselves about pollution and alleged consequences of pollution that they're so very worried about related to uh, thermometer issues. Yet they persist. And why? Because it's about power and money. And it's about those things in that order. Eating Our Way to Extinction was released a month ago on a channel with fewer subscribers than I have here and has garnered nearly 700,000 views and has the typical YouTube likes to dislike ratio of 95% positive reviews. When you get that many views with that, that few subscribers is a problem with what you're producing, by the way. Now, clearly we're not the ones watching this, nor is the typical consumer, but a lot of people are and they're liking it. Have you watched it yet? Will you watch it? I'll try to remember to post a link to it in the comments for your perusal if you want to see it. But let me know what you think of this push at the big conference this year in the comments, please, and the related propaganda being pushed, these sorts of documentaries. Will you expect to see more plant-based pushing coming from governments in your area soon? 
Let me know what you think about this. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That helps a lot as well. You can follow me on Instagram. You can find my information for that in the description box of this video. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore, and thanks for watching today.